So the new WSL season will start in two months with new faces in the dugout as well as on the pitch. And as you can see, a massive clash at the Emirates Stadium, potentially Manchester City heading to Arsenal. Blockbuster start to the new season at Viviana Miedema against her old club. Reigning champions Chelsea, uh, they start at home to Aston Villa with Sonia Bompastor coming up against another new manager in Robert Depau. And Fran Kirby's Brighton take on... Everton. Uh, what about their Merseyside neighbours? Uh, Liverpool start against Leicester, the suppliers package. That's a repeat of a fixture from the opening day last season. That was at Leicester. Liverpool won 4-0. West Ham are at Manchester United, who are missing a number of key names. And newly promoted Crystal Palace, hoping to pick up their first points at Tottenham. For more on this, we've got our reporters out and about. Padimo Ola is at Stamford Bridge. Sunny Rajavajula in Manchester. And Gary Cottrell is at the Emirates. Good afternoon to all of you. Going to start with Chelsea and Fadumo. A new era for the defending champions and a new face in the dugout. What makes Sonia Bompastor right for the job? Afternoon. Certainly it is a new era for Chelsea after an incredible 12 years in charge and 14 major trophies. Emma Hayes is off to the US going for that Olympic gold. But over here in West London, there's a new manager in the dugout, none other than Sonia Bompasto, who has done so much at Lyon. She became the first player, then manager, to win um, the Champions League with Lyon. Three back-to-back -back titles. And that Champions League is that one trophy that Emma Hayes just didn't make get whilst here at Chelsea. So it's going to be a really exciting new era. And this season, Chelsea not only are going to focus on that domestic title, but also trying to get their first Champions League. Uh, Chelsea have said goodbye to a number of players. I mentioned Fran Kirby, gone to Brighton. But really exciting to see Lucy Bronze arriving. Yeah, it was a summer of change for Chelsea. Obviously, after nine years here at Chelsea, Frank Kirby has gone to Brighton. But a really exciting time for Lucy Bronze, who's going to be here at Chelsea. She signed a two-year two deal with Chelsea, bringing her to the club. The defender has won five Champions League titles. She's also been in the WSL before, most recently with Manchester City, but also spells at Everton at Liverpool. And she's hoping to become part of that team that ultimately win the Champions League. That is that goal she's made and she brings that winning mentality alongside the manager. So it's going to be a really exciting year for Chelsea. What are the standout fixtures for Chelsea? Yeah, I think if we have a look at some of the fixtures, obviously the first opening game is against Aston Villa. That is going to be really exciting for them. And then they take on the newly promoted Crystal Palace before they move on um, to take on Manchester United, who won the FA Cup most recently, and then back-to-back -back games against their London rivals, Arsenal and Tottenham Hotspur. So a mixture of fixtures within that, and obviously alongside that, we're going to have domestic fixtures, whether it's the FA Cup, Chelsea's run at the Champions League. So it's going to be a really important period for Chelsea. They've won the title back-to-back -back so many times, and Sonia is going to want to assert her dominance in the league by winning that. Just while I've got you, am I right in saying that a rivalry has resumed before a ball has been picked, kicked? Yeah, I, don't, I think for our fans who are watching here on Sky Sports yeah. News, they would have seen that Sam Kerr did take a dig at Katie McCabe on their most recent kit launch. Most of a couple of months ago, you would have seen that sock gate happen, which was when Arsenal had to change their socks following a kit clash that led to them wearing the Chelsea socks. So there is a little bit of rivalry already going on, and we're hoping that that doesn't happen. So we're hoping for all the drama, all the excitement in the lead, and yeah, hopefully the correct socks. Well, let's hope so. Thanks very much indeed. You've been serenaded by the London bus as well. Thanks very much indeed for Demo and from Manchester to what's uh, public transports awaiting Sunny Rajavajla in Manchester. Afternoon to you. Uh, last season's runners-up and what an opening fixture in store for Manchester City and in particular for Viviana Miedema. Uh, yes, absolutely, Nick, and I'm just waiting for a Manchester Metrolink tram to just go past me now. But, yeah, Vivian Miedemar uh, joining Manchester City in the summer, and, yeah, she's going to face her old team, Arsenal, who, of course, were the team, arguably, who stopped Manchester City winning the title last season. You go to the 88th minute, Man City against Arsenal last season, City in the penultimate game. City had one hand on the trophy, two goals from Stina Black, Stenius late on, and that kind of cost it and allowed, it, allowed um, Chelsea to win the title on goal difference. Vivian Miedemar, she's had um, knee injuries these last two seasons, kind of struggled to get back to the position she was where she won the WSL Golden Boot twice, was in double figures, pushing towards 30 goals uh, 
in the WSL and she's a player that Gareth Taylor will certainly be wanting to get firing on all cylinders and what a better chance than going uh, and putting it to, to Jonas Eideval, the Arsenal manager and showing what she can still bring to this new Manchester City side that she's joining. Is it fair to think for Manchester City fans that she might be the difference? They were so close to the title last time. Yes, 2016, when they last uh, won the WSL. Five times they've come second in this title race. A lot of the goals last season were kind of reliant on Buddy Khadija Shaw. Uh, you know, she was really unplayable as far as the, the variety of goals she could bring in, dropping deep as well, linking play. And she got injured very late on in the season. And without her, City were kind of missing that, um, you know, that real bit of firepower up front. So Media is certainly a player who could certainly either fill in for sure but I'm sure perhaps potentially those two working together would be a very very scary partnership that would be arguably two of the best strikers in the league playing together so yeah she could be the missing piece of the puzzle and we'll have to wait and see when the, when the season kicks off Transfer window very much open can they keep hold of Chloe Kelly? That's the big question for City, isn't it? She's so important to this side. We know how important she is for the Lionesses and for City. She is absolutely crucial. She can play anywhere across the front line. She can drop deep as well. Delivery from each side has been vital this season, well, last season. And, yeah, Bunny Shaw, one of those players, really benefiting from that. So, yeah, it'll be really, really important for Manchester City to keep Kelly, there's been a few high-profile players who've left the club over the summer. Kelly, I think, is one they really need to keep hold of and perhaps use her to continue to, to build a team around. Yeah, very important for City to keep hold of Chloe Kelly. She's the, the main England star, I think. And at the other end of the pitch, will they be looking to bring in more defensive cover, do you think? Well, potentially. So, um, I mentioned players leaving. Demi Stokes and Steph Horton are, are the two main ones. Two players we all know through their exploits with the Lionesses who didn't really get a look in under Gareth Taylor, certainly last season. A lot of experience in the dressing room, though, has, has been missing now because those two have, have gone to pastures new. Um, and, yeah, that's, that's a place where perhaps City might want to be thinking about in defence. Esme Morgan, as well, has gone over to WSL, and she's only 23, so that's a player at the other end of the age spectrum who hasn't been brought in. But um, Alana Kennedy, who came on, actually, uh, when Kirsten Kaspari, who's taken the right-back position, that has meant that the likes of Demi Stokes haven't had a look in, or Esme Morgan um, going, has, has meant maybe, you know, perhaps... Gareth Taylor's quite happy to let those players go. So, yeah, Miedemar's kind of the key one going forward. By, by looking at how City played last year, Taylor might be happy, as he is, with the defenders that he's got. You know, when you think you can lose, you know, Manchester, England's all-time uh, capped player, former captain in Steph Horton, and be OK with that. And a key moment in that Arsenal game, not bring her on, for example, kind of shows the faith that he's got in the players around him. So, yeah, we'll wait and see. A bit of a while to go to that first WSL game. And by the way, uh, the Manchester derby is the penultimate game of the season, the second one, and the other one is in January as well. So lots for City fans to look forward to when the WSL season does kick off. Absolutely, Sonny. Thanks very much indeed. And off to the Emirates Stadium next. And Gary Cottrell, the Emirates are going to be the main home now of Arsenal women. How important is that for the growth of the game? Well, they've been at the forefront, uh, haven't they, uh, Arsenal, in terms of using big stadiums to bring big crowds in for, for big games. There were six WSL games here at the Emirates last season. There's going to be eight next season and potentially as well at least three Champions League games. So uh, record after record attendance-wise tumbled, of course, last season. The opening game of the season was held here. Uh, 54,000 attended. That was against Liverpool. Then there were 59,000 a little later on for the home game against Chelsea. Then they booked the place out. They filled the place. Over 60,000 tickets sold for Manchester United and the North London derby against Spurs. And I think pricing is going to see things carrying on that way. Do you know they've got a, a package available this season for WSL supporters where tickets do range in price, but the cheapest tickets... £80 if you pre-book all eight WSL games. That's £10 a ticket. So the whole family can come. And, of course, that's only good for the growth of the game. We mentioned that blockbuster for the opening game of the season, but there is another one in the first six that will have Arsenal fans licking their lips. Well, yeah, that opening game, of course, against Manchester City. And, you know, the men that weekend are away 
at Manchester City. So that frees this place up for that to be, of course, the first WSL home game of the season. So that'll be some opening for Arsenal. Then we'll run through the next six fixtures. Uh, Leicester away, uh, then Everton at home. Uh, that's the international break for the men. So potentially that one could be here at the Emirates as well. Uh, then uh, Chelsea home uh, on the um, 12th and the 13th of October. I'm sorry, that's the international break. The big one, Chelsea at home, not the Everton match. That's uh, the men are at home that weekend to Southampton, so that won't be played here. But the Chelsea game could well be because, as I say, international break. And that, of course, was 59,000 here last season. Then West Ham away, then Manchester United away, then Brighton at home. And the North London derby, by the way, will be uh, here, will be mid-February. Arsenal were up and down a bit, weren't they? last season, frustrating their fans at times? Yeah, up and down Caesar, and of course, uh, you know, not finishing in the league where they would have hoped. They, they did win the Conti Cup, of course, uh, so that was a highlight. Uh, one of the downs, I would have thought, last season came very, very early on. In fact, it couldn't have come any earlier. It was that first home game here against Liverpool. They lost. I think that stunned the players. It stunned the coaching staff. It stunned the club. It stunned the fans. Then they got back onto an even keel. They managed to draw at Manchester United. Then they went on a winning run of 10 games until Tottenham at Tottenham ended that winning run. I think uh, the 4-1 victory uh, in the WSL here over Chelsea was a highlight. The crowd, the packed, as we've mentioned, crowd certainly enjoyed it, beating uh, Chelsea in the Conti Cup as well. But one of the low lights, perhaps the reverse feature in the WSL, that Sockgate, which we've already heard referred to, where they lost 3-1 uh, in front of the cameras uh, to Chelsea. No Emma Hayes this time around, though, for Arsenal and Arsenal fans, so they'll be hoping that uh, things can be a little bit better in terms of their WSL finish.